F to C major. Two chords in the key of C, four to one. Very simple, but very beautiful. What we're gonna do right now is explore some ideas, concepts, and devices to solo and expand this beautiful progression. So I guess the first stop is, what can we add to this, what do you think? I don't know man, it sounds pretty good as it is. I think the first thing for me is to think major pentatonic, specifically in the key of C. So the basic scale for that would be C, D, E, G, A, C running that up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Where would we go from there, though? Maybe. Mm. I can use C major as well to get more color, so... Ah! Getting that B in there, right there, yeah. And then nine or the six. Mm -hmm. And indeed. Mm, yeah. A little chromatic action. Chromatic action. You want to try? <laughs> between the notes in the pentatonic scale adds a little bit more color in there. Yeah. Nice, cool. What about the bass? What about the bass? <laughs> I'm glad you asked that, Rotom. One of the best things about being a bass player is that the harmony follows what note you decide to associate with each chord. So, if I play a D, for example, right there, whoa! different harmonic realm, and that's just one note that's different. When I play the yeah. D on top of that F major 7, it turns it into, listen, a D minor 9. Very nice. I can do that with different bass notes, too. For example, I can play an A here. Ooh, nothing changed except my bass note, and now all of a sudden it's a minor progression. Going back and forth between D minor 9 and A minor 9. So good. You can take it even further. For example, I could play a G here. It has a different kind of color on that C major 7. C major 7 over G, the 5. And if I'm soloing mm -hmm. on that idea of bass movement, Two a little bit or the six. Ah, okay. mm. Yeah. <laughs> so what are those kinds of chords that you just played? What are what are you doing there when you're throwing in all of those chords? I guess like chords. Maybe. You're taking chords from the key. Yeah, I guess I think a lot of times that the idea of moving uh, between points of harmony is like kind of going between two geographical points. Mm -hmm. In that sense, my target is C and the path that we're going can change. So from here, from this F, I can get to the C in a lot of ways. Maybe even more chromatic. I'll try. Ooh, let's, let's show. Also solo on that, you know. Yeah. So could be a little 
dissonance. Mm, just locking. Yeah. And then maybe. Just trying to create different pathways to arrive into C. Yeah. Maybe you try it. No. Will I? Will I succeed? to find different ways to arrive at our destination. And sometimes it could be just two, three things, right? Just like F major seven. So like E minor, E flat, D minor to C. Just kind of like a slide a little bit of chromaticism there, but let's... Yeah, one tip, by the way, as a bass player, if you're playing with a rotum, like a guitar player who's gonna throw in this stuff, is look at that left hand and let go when he's about to do those passing chords. Exactly. So you can be the anchor to keep that F major 7 to C major 7 going, which gives him the freedom to take that kind of harmonic exploration. It's true. Sometimes it, it could be a little annoying when the bass player does exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, like if I do... <laughs> it's just like it's not quite doesn't have that same kind of groundedness that if you're just like chilling there. Sometimes it could be fun, but usually I'm hearing this against the, the chord. So exactly. it's like I'm kind of imagining the tension against the C or, or whatever it is. So there's like a scaffolding. And if the scaffolding goes away. <laughs> it doesn't have that chill feeling. As fun as it is to throw it in once or twice. Mm. But it's really nice to just chill there and yeah. and yeah. There's something about like keeping it simple, at least the harmony simple, and then at the right moments throwing in that spice, throwing in that little bit of a tweak. So mm. one thing that's really cool is choosing a pentatonic that's not necessarily a C major pentatonic, so or the major pentatonic. For example, E minor pentatonic. Let's hear it. You e minor pentatonic. Okay. <laughs> go further and further around the circle of fifths. It takes more on that uh, out context where it sounds more, you know, modern jazz. <laughs> yeah, and the reason I chose E minor pentatonic, also the reason that you chose B is because these are basically the upper structure of the chords, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm thinking about C the center, E minor, will give me both the major 7 and the 9 in relationship to C right. and it gives the flat 5 and the, and the 6 in relationship to F. And that, that B minor pentatonic has uh, the F 
sharp hit it, which is a little intense against the uh, F major 7. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Yeah, might, might be a little, a little intense, uh, but if you approach it with a little bit more tact than what I just did, <laughs> might work. And I think also going back and forth between the kind of extensions and tensions to simplicity. So like, mm, maybe a try, so... Mm, try it. Another thing I really like doing sometimes is just like feeling the centers and imagining the colors, almost like really as colors, like literally painting. So I try to omit the idea that I can play a wrong note. Enjoying the pain. <laughs> Enjoy the pain. <laughs> That's what jazz is all about. A little bit, right? Just a little bit of that tension. You it's, got... al it's also about believing in that tension. Once you start feeling it, you, you, you learn the colors themselves. I uh, had a conversation with um, a friend of mine, uh, amazing, amazing piano player, uh, Shai Maestro, and he, he was telling me that uh, he has this kind of concept that he calls um, Shitenkyu, which is basically kind of like you want to shorten the amount of time that passes between the time you say shit, you play something that's like wrong, and the moment you say thank you and embrace that and memorize and kind of absorb the sound and you enjoy that and make it sound cool. So you're like... Uh. You know what I mean? Yeah. like extreme yeah. and then going back to Thank you. 
putting out a workshop that is connected to lo-fi so if you mm. dig this kind of vibe you can check it out i'll have a link once it's out so yes take it out Ruto. thank you so much for listening everybody this is adam neely thanks for hanging with me yeah, and man. um see you guys very soon we'll jam a little bit <laughs>